talking about the middle class is something that isn't done enough of here in this chamber the middle class is something that makes america what it is the middle class is something that speaks to americans and says come join us we represent opportunity in this country we represent the ability to to achieve more to to realize the american dream it's 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 the middle class that makes america different from so many other nations in this world and it's the middle class that we must we must work overtime to make sure we preserve because if we lose the middle class in this country we lose the sense of opportunity the sense of hope the sense of upward mobility we lose an essential element of what it is to be americans we have to do everything we can do to preserve the middle class and one of the biggest stoutest pillars of the middle class is our education system in this country including the higher education system i rise mr speaker in opposition to hr 1911 on the floor tomorrow nominally it is called the smarter solution students act i call it and many of my colleagues call it the make college more expensive act a much more accurate title for this bill according to the congressional research service this bill hr 1911 students who borrow the maximum amount of twenty seven thousand dollars of unsubsidized and subsidized Stafford loans over five years would pay twelve thousand three hundred and seventy four dollars in interest under HR 1911 or ten thousand eight hundred and sixty seven dollars in interest under current law if rates are allowed to double to six point eight percent or seven thousand and thirty three dollars if rates stay at three point four percent keeping the interest rates where they are will save our students nearly five thousand dollars and for that reason i co-sponsored representative joseph courtney's bill hr 1433 which will extend these low rates for at least two more years and that's the fair thing to do that's the decent thing to do it's the american thing to do to protect the middle class this is the approach that we need now with costs of college rising and student debt expanding at historically high rates let's examine the facts the total outstanding student loan debt in the united states has surpassed the one trillion dollar mark this is a figure that has outpaced credit card debt auto debt it's second only to mortgage debt in this entire nation. A recent study shows that student loan debt is the only type of consumer debt in the United States of America that has actually increased during this great recession. And the problem only continues to grow worse. As a result of these debts, millions of Americans cannot buy cars, purchase new homes, start businesses or do the other things that mean realizing the american dream it's a terrible time for young people it's a horrific time for young people talk about the employment rate for young people the unemployment rate in april for people between the ages of 16 and 24 was 16.2 percent more than double the national average that we read about in the newspapers According to a recent study commissioned by Demos, nearly 45% of unemployed Americans are between those ages of 16 and 34. The study also stated that 4.7 million young Americans are underemployed, working part-time when what they really want to do is get full-time, family-sustaining, sustaining good-paying jobs. There is, they don't have them. The result? young americans are either unemployed or underemployed and will likely lose a combined 20 billion dollars in earnings over the next decade that's from the center for american progress 
raising their college interest rates is going to further impact their ability to purchase homes cars pay for their children to go to school further dragging down our dragging economy this is all on top of the cost of college the, the average Published tuition and fees for in-state students at public four-year colleges in this country increased by 66% beyond the rate of inflation between 2002 and 2003 and the 2012-2013 academic years. 66% beyond the rate of inflation. For private colleges, the tuition and fees increased by 27% beyond the rate of in inflation in that comparable time period. Since 1982, the cost of college tuition and fees is up 582%, twice the rate of medical care, which is also exploding, as we all know. To help provide students and parents greater transparency as to the true cost, what a college education in total will cost, I introduced Last week, H.R. 2020, the Truth and Tuition Act, which will require schools to either present each incoming class of students with a multi-year tuition and fee schedule or give each student a non-binding estimate of what their education will cost them individually. H.R. 2020, the Truth and Tuition Act, would require schools either to present each incoming class of students with a multi-year tuition and fee schedule or give each student a non-binding estimate of what their education is gonna cost them individually, taking into account tuition, fees, and that particular student's financial aid package. In this bill, there are no price caps and it does not freeze the, pi the price of tuition. Schools are free to set tuition rates as they see, see fit. This legislation will help students and families plan by laying it out in front of them what they can expect the entire cost of the college education to be. And make sure colleges and universities give every student a clear picture of what their degree will cost. Now responsible colleges and universities are already doing this and this is already the law in the state of Illinois. This is already happening. But it's the, it's the non-compliant, it's the colleges that maybe aren't going the extra mile to inform the students of what kind of fees and costs and tuition that they're facing during the whole co course of their university or college career. It's the, the colleges and universities who are not revealing this uh, that this bill is addressing. This legislation will help students and families plan for higher education by making sure that they get a clear picture of what the degree is gonna cost. It's also gonna cut down on excess, excessive tuition and fee fluctuations. Uh, it's gonna help rein in skyrocketing college costs and it'll encourage colleges to maintain some kind of uh, level, uh, non-fluctuating tuition schedule so that surprises don't happen to the students. It'll also slow college dropout rates in this nation. College, colleges all across the country are experiencing dropouts for the, for the very reason that the students didn't expect the, the tuition and fees to, ra to, to be raised the way they have been. The cost of a higher education and the debt carried by our recent graduates have skyrocketed skyrocketed across the last decade. It's, it's the cost of the tuition and it's the interest attached to the debt that are the crippling features of this. Without having a full picture of college costs, students and their families are forced to take on more student loan debt than they originally anticipated. This bill, HR 2020, the Truth in Tuition Act, helps stop the uncertainty. And a further advantage of it is pricing that colleges will think ahead about costs and have incentives develop, to develop more restrained budget growth plans. Ultimately, advertised long-term pricing may encourage some colleges to limit their tuition growth voluntarily. In the event of 